All right, so the problem says to consider uh, the limit as x approaches 2 of the function 4x minus 1. And clearly you can figure it out just from plugging into that uh, the limit is going to be 7. Um, but they want you to show, they want you to show that um, the absolute value of f of x, which is 4x minus 1, minus 7, uh, will be less than 4 delta if x minus 2 is less than delta. Now what does that mean? Uh, if you recall, let me just go back here for a second and remind you what the definition of a limit is. Here is say 4x. 4 well, uh, Let's just say that this is 4x minus 1. Forget about the x-axis here. I'll draw it right there. Then. Okay. So I'm not knock it out and let's say this point here is uh, that's going to be what 2 7 alright in order for the limit to exist which we say is right here that's 7 here's the x value of 2 alright for any tolerance for any um, for any number epsilon that you are given that's this distance here that's epsilon that's epsilon. For any epsilon, no matter how small, right, there's always going to be a range of x values down here such that, right, and this distance, the distance between the outermost point here is delta. I hope you can see that. So this distance is delta. It means that for the limit to exist, for any epsilon, no matter how small, no matter how small we take this region and shrink it down, there's always going to be a corresponding range of deltas in here, such that whenever you pick an x inside here, you switch colors, if you pick an x, say here, and do f of it, the y value that it takes you to will always be within epsilon units of the number that supposedly is the actual limit. All right. So, what they want you to show here is that if the distance between x and 2 is less than some number, then that implies automatically that the distance between the function and 7 is going to be less than 4 times that number. So, let me give you an example of that. Um, let's see here. So, that means that if you got this, and here's the graph again, and here's our point. All right, here's two. Uh, whoa, all right, here. Let's say that we're going to take uh, we're going to take a delta equal to one. Okay, so two. So out here is three, and here is one. So it's one and three. And what the problem wants you wants you what part A wants you to to show is that the distance between the output f of x and 7 will be less than 4 times, uh, in this case, 1. So long as, okay, I'll say so long as, so long as the distance between x and 2 is less than 1. Now, I'm trying this with an actual number here. They want you to show it with, a, with, a, with like an arbitrary number, delta. But let's see if that's true. If I plug in numbers out inside this range, um, let's say x is 1. If I do f of 1, what was x? Uh, f of x was 4x minus 1. If I plug in 1, I get 4 times 1 is 4, minus uh, 1 is 3. So that's going to be here. That's, that leads to this number, and that'll be 3. <clears throat> and if I plug in 3, I get 4 times 3 is 12, minus 1 is 11, so that's 11. Now 7 is here, well, 7 is there. So the distance between 7 and 3 is uh, less than or equal to 4, and the distance between 7 and 11 is less than or equal to 4. So what this is trying to say is, so long as x is within 1 unit of 2, the output is going to be within four units of seven. And that's what we showed here. That's 
pretty much, I mean it's easy to see if your function is simple, like it's a line, but any number that I pick inside here is going to be sent up and it's going to be at least four units away. Now that was a consequence of the fact that delta equaled one. We could play the same game if we picked different numbers for, uh, for, for delta. Say that um, if we wanted to show that, um, well, we could show that if the distance between x and 2 was something like 1 half, so, we all, so if we were restricting ourselves to numbers like uh, 1.5 and 2.5, that the values of the outputs would be closer. They would be within, um, uh, not 4, but 4 times 1 half, or 2 units of 7. So if we were in here, we'd be guaranteed to be no more than 2 units away. And if we in here, no more than 2 units away. Now, I'm kind of showing this just by drawing it on a, on here, uh, but they want you to show it for real. They want you to take the inequalities and show that uh, the one can be deduced fr from the other. So let me just formulate that again. It says to show uh, if, all right, so if absolute x minus 2 is less than delta, then f of x minus 7 absolute it will be less than 4 delta. Okay, so we have to start with this. What they want you to do is start with this inequality and arrive at this as the conclusion. And the way that this is uh, typically done is um, we actually start here. And we start with, with what we want to prove and we work our way back to something that looks like this. So we can come up um, uh, so we come up with some kind of a statement from this and if this can be deduced from that statement then we've shown what we wanted to show. Now, I know that sounds a little bit convoluted but um, let me just re replace f of x with what it actually is. We want to show that 4x minus 1 minus 7 absolute will be less than 4 delta so long as this is true. Okay, so watch how I do this. This is what I want to prove. So I'm going to start here and just start cleaning it up. You just manipulate the inequality in ways that are going to give you something that looks like this in the end. So I take the 1 and the 7, I make 8, there's the 4, we want this to be 4 delta. If we can show this, then we have shown this. Alright, great. I'll factor out a 4, so 4 less than that, uh, x minus uh, 2 is less than 4 delta. So if I can show this, then, I, then that means that the, the truth of this implies this, which in, tries, which in turn implies the, the truth of this. Now if I cancel the 4's, I wind up with x minus 2 absolute is less than delta. What that means is, if I start here, which is what we're supposed to start from, and I and I can work my way back to this. Then what you want to sh then what I've wanted to show is in fact true. So let's see how how it goes here. We we want remember we want to get to this starting here. So I'll just reverse these steps in order. If this is true, then it is also true that I can multiply both sides by four, and come up with four times x minus two absolute is less than four delta. All right, then I can bring that 4 inside and say absolute 4x minus 8 is less than 4 delta. And then finally, I can rewrite this 8 as 4x minus 1 minus 7 is less than 4 delta. And this, of course, is f of x minus 7 less than 4 delta. This is what constitutes the actual proof. This is the answer to part A. All right? They want you to show this if this. And that's what we just did. If we start here and don't even think about this, we could do algebraic steps and work our way to what they wanted us to prove. So that's, uh, that's the answer to part A. Part B says, wants us to find a delta such that um, f of x minus 7 
will be less than uh, one one hundredth if uh, absolute x minus two is less than delta. So they they want us to find a delta such that this is going to be true. So again, we have to start here for some number delta and figure out a way to get to this. Well, we already know how to do it. Uh, again, we're just going to work backwards again. f of x was 4x minus 1 minus 7 less than 1 one hundredth uh, which is 4x minus 8 less than 1 one hundredth factor out the 4 4 uh, x minus uh, 2 is less than 1 one hundredth and then finally divide by 4 and we wind up with this 2 absolute is less than 1 over 400 the actual answer to the question is delta equals 1 over 400 or anything less because check it out if delta is 1 over 400 then we're going to start with this. We'll say x minus 2 is less than 1 over 400. Well, from this, if I multiply both sides by 4, I get to 4 absolute x minus 2 will be less than 1 over 100. And as you see, again, you do the same things. Bring this in, right? This, this is just this here. If you bring in that 4, you work your way to this step and then if you write rewrite 8 you'll work your way here and then finally this is what we wanted to arrive at so we found a delta all right if you want to make the distance between where is it here if you want the distance between let's see between f and 7 to be less than not 2 but uh, 1 over 100, all that you got to do is make x minus 2 less than um, 1 over 400. Right? So if delta, if this distance here and this distance here, if these little distances are 1 400th, then you're guaranteed to send x into a region that is within 1 100th one, um, one of seven. That's what that means. All right. I know it's tough. Um, now part C wants you to do it um, with not one one hundredth but with a given uh, but with any given number epsilon. So it goes the same exact way. We want to sh let me see. We want to show um, that f of x minus L or, or in this case, we want to show that 4x minus 1 minus 7 will be less than epsilon whenever um, x minus 2 is less than delta. So what we want to do here is we want to find a delta based on epsilon such that whenever uh, x minus 2 is less than delta, it's going to show up to prove this. So once again, all you got to do is work backwards. Clean this up. 4x minus 8. Absolute. Less than epsilon. Take out the 4 again. x minus 2. Less than epsilon. x minus 2. Less than epsilon over 4. This is what it is. If we let delta equal epsilon over 4 then that's going to mean then that is going to imply that this is true all that you need to do is to show that it actually works so we'll start out here we're going to say let delta uh, let delta be equal to epsilon over 4 so I give you a really tiny number uh, of really small tolerance all that you're going to do is divide that tolerance by 4 and say alright well then I'm going to let delta be that and you're guaranteed to have uh, f of x will be within epsilon units of 7. Uh, so this is how it actually starts. Let, ep let delta be epsilon over 4. So that's going to give us absolute x minus 2 is less than epsilon over 4. So 
All right, then all we have to do is work our way backwards once again, multiply by four. If this is true, then it must be true that four times x minus two absolute is gonna be less than epsilon. Bring in the, the four, so if this is true, that's gonna mean that four x minus eight is less than epsilon. And that's gonna mean that 4x uh, minus 1 minus 7 will be less than epsilon, which shows that absolute f of x minus 7 is less than epsilon. And that's what completes the, the proof. We have found a delta such that this is true whenever this is true. And that delta happens to be epsilon over 4.